At this point, we've been able to write most of our endpoints for orders as well as for our authentication. Now we're going to be able to basically describe what our API does using our Swagger UI. So the Swagger UI is automatically generated for us by Flash Crest X. And the beauty is you can use Flash Crest X to document it in detail. And this can happen using our Python code. So to do this, what we're going to do is to edit our views and basically add these using our namespace. We're going to add these documentations to every endpoint of our application using our namespaces. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a title as well as a description to our API. So right here we have API, uh, which is not actually the name of our API, so we're going to change this while providing a title. So I'm going to come right here, and what I'll do is to go to our API instance. So we need to go to our init.py right here, and right here we have a create app function, which is application factory, and we also take in an API instance. So this API instance is basically coming from Flash Crest X, and it's what Flash works with, so as to use Flash Crest X. So right in here, we get a lot of attributes. For example, we get the title. So this title is the title of the API on our Swagger UI. So I'm going to provide this and say it's going to be a pizza delivery API. Right after doing this, I'm going to add a comma. I also provide a description. So I'll just come right here and say that our description is going to be equal to, so I'll basically add our description and let's say it's going to be a REST API for a pizza delivery service. So just going to say for a pizza delivery service. So I'm going to just come right in here and add this. And when I save, I'm going to go ahead and refresh our front end. So when you go back to our front end, I'm going to refresh and right now we we'll see pizza delivery API and the description for our uh, for our API. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for our endpoint. So when you check our endpoints right here, we have our documentation that we created using our doc strings. Now we're going to go and basically add this description so that you can be able to add it and be able to do it within our API description. So I'm going to close this and when I go back to our code, I'm going to go to our other views. So I'm going to start with that endpoint that helps us to actually get one order, get all orders or retrieve all orders. So I'm going to use our namespace by saying at order namespace dot, in this case it's going to be doc. So it takes in the various arguments. So the first argument we're going to specify is going to be our description. So this description is going to tell us what this API endpoint does. So in this case, we're going to say uh, retrieve all orders. And then we are going to go ahead and specify uh, the, in the description for another endpoint, which is the one for placing an order. So I'm actually going to take care of all the descriptions in our orders. So I'm going to just come right here and say at order namespace, then it's going to be dot doc. So right in here, I shall have a description. So I'm just going to say description. And then right in here, I can say that I'm going to have this as, so we need to basically have this as a route for placing order. So I'll say place and order. So after doing that, I'm going to do the same thing for other routes. So for example, the one for helping us to retrieve an order by its ID. So I'll just come and say at order namespace dot doc. In this case, we're going to actually have our description. And this is going to be a retrieve an order by its ID. So I'm just going to say retrieve an order by ID. And then I'm going to go ahead and also add the one for, for updating run order. So I'll just come right in here and say add order namespace dot. In this case, it's going to be dot. So we're going to provide our first element. It's going to be our description. And then this description is going to be for update and order. So I'll say given. So it's going to be given and order ID. So I'm just going to also do the same thing for our delete route. So I'll just come and say at order namespace dot. In this case, it's going to be doc. So I'm just going to provide doc. And in here, we're going to have a description. So our description in this case is going to be for deleting an order. So I'll say delete an order given an order ID. So I'll basically say given our order 
ID. So when I save this and I'm going to actually document all of them. So I'll just come and do the same thing here. I'll say at order namespace dot in this case I'll say uh, doc and in this case I'll also provide a description. So this is going to be a description. And right in here, we have one of getting a user specific order. So I'll say get uh, users, which is be user specific order. So to be specific order. And right after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and also document one for getting all users order. So I'll just come right here. I'll just say uh, order namespace dot doc. And in this case, I'll say that our description. It's going to be equal to so in, in here I'm going to actually say that we're going to get a user's orders. So I'll say get orders of a user given the user ID. So I'll say the user ID. So right after doing that, I'm going to go to the last one, which is actually for updating an order status. And right in here I'll say that we need to have at order namespace dot. In this case, we shall say doc. And I'm going to also do the same thing. So I'll provide a description. So our description in this case is going to be for updating an order status. So I'll say update and order status. So I'll say actually update and order status given the ID. So I'll say given the order ID. So I'll say order ID. So right after doing this, when you go back to our UI, we see that these descriptions have actually been added onto our Swagger UI. So when I go back to our UI right here and I refresh. So when you go to our orders right here, when I go to updating an order status, we're going to see that this description is now being added, which is which is nice. So we actually check uh, the other route. So we see update an order given the ID, uh, place an order, so get a, get all orders, uh, get a user specific order. Now that you've been able to add these descriptions, we're also going to be able to add the different parameters that we need when we actually making these requests to certain endpoints. For example, when we are to retrieve an order by its ID, we need to pass the ID of that specific order as a parameter in our URL. So I'm going to come right here and we are going to add our parameters. So right now we see that our parameters quite Part is actually empty. We don't have any parameters. So we're going to go ahead and look into how we can be able to specify these parameters on our Swagger UI. So to do that, we need to go to our code right here. So we need to go to where we actually start having our parameters, which is where we are retrieving an order by its ID. So I'll pass the second argument right here as our params. So this is actually going to be a dictionary called params. And this dictionary is going to take in parameter for example in this case we have the order id so we're going to say the order id and in this case we're also going to pass in the description of what that parameter is for example i can say an id so i'll say an id for a given order so i'll say an id for a given order and right after doing that i'm going to save and after saving i'll come right to uh, our Swagger UI. So when I go back to our Swagger UI right here and refresh, when you go to that specific endpoint for getting a user an order by its ID, I mean, we're going to see that that parameter is actually added, which is the order ID is required, and then you have an ID for a given order. So you can be able to actually input it when you're trying out this request. So we're going to do the same thing for other routes. So I'm going to go to our code, and right here we have a route for actually getting. Uh, updating an order, so we'll do the same thing. I'm actually going to copy the params dictionary right here and I'll paste it right within our documentation. So I'll just come right here and say our params. Then you have an order ID, and this is going to be an ID for the given order. So I'm going to save and then go to the one for deleting, which is also going to take in the order ID. So I'm going to add it that as well. Now, after adding the params dictionary, I'm also going to go and uh, basically add params to our getting a specific order route. So here we have two parameters, which are the order ID as well as the user ID. So I'm just going to come right here. I'm going to add the first ID, which is our order ID. And then I'm going to come and also specify that we're going to have our user ID. So the user ID is going to be a user's ID. So in this case, we're going to have a user's ID. So after saving that, I'm going to come right here and 
do the same thing. So I'll just come right here. So here we have a user ID. So I'm just going to come by pasting our params. So here we're going to actually have a user user ID. So in this case, we're going to have an ID for a given user. So right after doing that, the we're going to go ahead and also document our last row. So in this case, we're going to have one that has an order ID. So I'm just going to add our params. And now it seems like we are sorted. So when I refresh and go back to our Swagger UI, so when I refresh, we expect to see these changes. So when I go to our orders, uh, we can see that our order ID params have been added. So we can also look at our get a specific user route, which has uh, both the user ID as well as our order ID. So now we, this is actually working. So what we need is also a way for us to be able to operate or we authorize users to actually access certain endpoints. For example, if we went and got all orders right now, and you say try it out. When you execute this, you actually see that you are being told that you are missing an authorization header. So using our for UI, we should be able to send these requests as well as to be able to see the rest of the and and status code. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and set up our authentication or our authorization in our security scheme. So that is actually also going to be done within our API instance. So I'm going to go back right here and within our API instance, we're going to go ahead and specify which kind of security and which kind of security scheme we want to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add, so I'll say authorizations. And in this case, I'm going to create a variable called authorizations. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. So I'll just come right here at the top and say we're going to have our authorizations. And in this case, we're going to define our security scheme. So we want our, sec our security to be bearer auth. So we need to actually author authorize with bearer and then JWT, the JWT or the API key in this case. So I'm going to specify this by saying bearer and then auth. So we're going to basically use bearer auth in this case. Now this is also going to be a dictionary. So the first thing we shall have to specify is the type of authentication we want. So in this case, we're going to say type and in this case, we're going to say that our type is going to be the API key. So we need to specify this as an API key. Now I need this API key to be located within our header. So I'm going to say in, and then I'm going to specify where we want this to be passed. So we need to pass our JWT in our authorization header. So I'm going to say header. And then I'm going to come and also specify uh, which the name of that header. So in this case, it's going to be the authorization header. So I'll say, uh, in this case, I'll say name, and the name of this is actually going to be our authorization header. So I'm going to come and say uh, authorization. Actually, it's going to be authorization. And right after specifying this, and we need some sort of description to help users who are going to actually use this Swagger UI to know how they are going to pass their JWT. So I'm just going to come right here, I'll add the description. And this description is going to be uh, add uh, JWT. So I'll say with. So this is actually markdown. So I can do something like uh, star star. And then I can actually go ahead. It's going to be a heading. So I can just say bearer. And then I'm going to use the greater than and the less than sign as we're going to see. So in this case, we need the less than sign first. So I'll say uh, <coughs> this is going to be and less than. So this is in Markdown. So I'll actually write right in here. I'll say JWT. And then I'm going to also say at greater than. So this will be a uh, great greater than saying. So to authorize. So here it's going to read as add a JWT with para JWT to authorize. So I'll just basically say to authorize. Actually, it's going to be lowercase. So I'll say to authorize. And right after doing this, I'm going to go ahead and save. And right after saving, now we can be able to expect to authorize it up there or to now contain. Now I'm also going to add one thing that basic one attribute to our API instance that's basically describing the kind of security scheme we're using. So I'm just going to come right here and say security is going to be equal to so I'll just basically add bearer or so after saving this. Uh, we expect to see uh, authorization on our UI. So when I go back to our UI, I'm going to refresh. 
And when I refresh right now, we see that our authorized button has been added. So when you go around here, we see that our API endpoints are now protected with a padlock. And now let's try to actually get uh, let's try to actually get a user actually log in and get a data reach so that we can authenticate. So what I'm going to do is to actually create a new user. So I'll first try to get a new user. So I'm going to go to the sign up route. So I'm going to try this out. So I'm going to provide a username, let's say uh, Jonathan. So when I provide the email, so this is going to be uh, Jonathan35 at gmail.com. We're also going to have a password. So in this case, let's say our password is going to be password for now. Now when I try to execute this, we are going to get our user created. So 201 status code. So now we are safe. So I'm going to try to log in with this user so that we acquire the JWT pair. So I'm just going to come right here and I'll go to the login route. So I'll come right here and try it out. So we're going to have our email. So right in here, our email is going to be Jonathan35 at gmail.com. I'm going to have our string password. So I'm just going to have password. And when this is fine, we're going to go ahead and execute. So when you execute this, we get an access as well as a refresh token. So I'm going to actually get this refresh, this access token I need. Mean. When we get this access token, and I'll use it to authorize, so I'll just come right in here. So what I meant was actually have add uh, JWT with there, and then JWT to authorize. So I'm just going to come here and say that we're going to have there, uh, and then our authentication key, OIPI key. So I'm going to authorize, and when I authorize, we now see that we've been authenticated. So when we're going to try to actually access the projected route, for example, that route that helps us to get all orders. So I'm just going to come right here, and I'll say get all orders. So I'm going to try this out. So when I try this out, we can actually access our routes that are now protected, which means that we have been able to authorize into our Swagger UI.